team, you have to ensure that they're on the same page as you and every step. It may take a while to get there, but I don't think it's an option to just say, look, this is just how we do things here. Yeah, okay. No, you have to be able to be that change and ensure that everyone around you, Sorry. everyone around you is um, also understanding the reason. So you don't just say, look, this is the way we do it change. You have to explain every single reason and so that they buy in, they understand, and you have to create your company culture so that these are things you learn along the way. You don't get them automatically, but if someone who's been in business for a good number of years is telling you that, look, this is a way to do things, this is a good way to do things, please take the advice. If you can learn earlier, it's better, then you don't have to go through a lot of stuff. When you begin, if you know that you have a company culture document, for example, and just say to people that this is how we are, this is who we are, this is why we are doing this, and this is our expectations. Everybody has to meet these expectations or else it's not gonna work. They will buy into it, and once they understand the why, most of the time, you have people thinking on the same page as you, and training, you can't underemphasize or overemphasize why it's important to train your team so that everybody is on the same page and understands the reasons why you want to space out your products on the product shelf, you know, a certain number of inches apart, or you don't want to overstack the shelf. This is our aesthetic, this is our identity. And once you do the opposite, it's no longer representative of who we are. And it may seem mundane to them, but the more you explain the reasons behind it and what branding is and what brand equity is, they do start to understand. And before you know it, they're even better than you. For most entrepreneurs, we thrive on adversity. Um, I think that is uh, what separates uh, entrepreneurs from everyone else. I think we, we really love a challenge. And so uh, I think myself in particular, when I get a challenge, I just get really ramped up. Like I have to solve this. I, I have to figure this out. And I don't give myself any other option. Failure is just not an option. Not an and, option. and I think that uh, to be an entrepreneur, you have to have that mentality because you're gonna face every single problem that you could possibly uh, have come up and you have to have that mentality going in and I think we all do. I think, I think, I think we all do that we're gonna have problems and I think everybody in this room has faced problems that they never expected, whether it be financing, production, raw materials, there's, there's always something and I think that uh, all of us here based in Ghana, I think we're all superheroes because we do have challenges. And I think that if you can if you can meet some of the challenges that we face and then still export and still do what we do, we've already kind of crossed that bridge. So I think just getting to be an entrepreneur, you wash that out of the way, the, the option of failing. And you just focus on what do I need to do to solve this problem and how am I going to solve it? And I, and I think that's the that's just the way to go in terms of facing adversity because they're going to come. Sometimes it's just about having resilience, right? So when you fall flat on your face and everybody's like pointing fingers, oh, she made that mistake and all that, it's fine. You know, it's what you do after you fail. That's the most important. You need to pick yourself up, <laughs> you know, stand tall and just keep going and never give up. And that's what I'll say to you. I mean, it was... It's been quite an, a journey for me. People told me that I was going to fail. You know, they're like, oh, what you're doing is such a daunting task. How are you going to get financing for creative businesses in Africa? African fashion funds. Wait a minute. First of all, like the <laughs> most interesting thing is most people who give back, right, philanthropists are supposed to be very wealthy. And so people look at you and they're like, ah, you don't have money. How are you going to be a philanthropist? How are you going to start a foundation, who's going to support you, where are you going to find the money? And my mom, you know, is has invested a lot in my education, and she's sitting back and she's like, wait, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> where am I getting this? You know, like, what's going on with my daughter? And I'm like, mom, I'm on this journey, and I'm so passionate about it, and I know I failed a few times, I know I made these mistakes, I lost a lot of money, you know, but I am still going on that journey. And I think that's, that resilience, and I think we all have it here, yeah. right? Because a lot of us, um, I mean, I can speak for myself, I didn't have any support, you know, from family, from friends, from anybody. I have moral support, which is great, but financial support, I didn't have that, you know? And I was also in competition with people that have 
made a lot of money, you know, in this world and are willing to give back and people respect that versus the young person who's up and coming. But I still kept going and now, you know, I, I feel like I'm onto something which is great, which can transform lives, which will make a great impact on this continent. And I did it because I just kept going, I never gave up. <laughs>